Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday. I am, as always, very excited to be making art today, and we are going to be joined by Melinda, who will be teaching us about some kind of quick, fun abstractions to get us started in our classroom or just to warm up for yourself. So, super psyched about it. We're going to grab our materials and get in the zone a little bit. Remember, this time for us on Monday is for us to kind of open up that creative spark as our educators, as creatives, and really try to have that sort of set time for us to um, express ourselves creatively and not just be teachers, but instead be artists as well um, and really try to have that modeling mindset. So as always, I'm Sarah Krajewski. I'm super psyched to see you guys today and we're going to get Melinda right in here so that we can get started and she will tell us what we need just to begin as far as how we're going to grab our materials. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to see you all here. So I'm going to just wait for a second. There she is. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm not a music teacher, but like, I'm going to sing no matter what. It's just how it goes. Melinda is here. I can tell. <gasps> Hello, friend. Hello. You did it. I did it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm so nervous. No, you're doing, you're great. As long as you're here, then it, what else, what else could we need from you, right? You're here, you're you, that's all we need. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm so excited. I've looked forward to this and i um, excited to make some art today. So me too. Hopefully, I know sometimes as teachers, we like, I'm always lesson planning. And even when I take like an adult art class, I'm like, Ooh, how could I adapt this for my kids? So yeah. I'm going to do that today, but I am going to share something that I do in my classroom with my students. Yes. So. I'm so Super excited about it. Well, Melinda, can you just give us a quick, like, super speedy intro of who you are, where you teach, what level, just a little bit about you before we get started with our art making? Yes. So um, I teach in Anaheim, California. Um, I teach a high school elective class, mostly beginners. So it's called Drawing and Painting One. And it's really that class that anyone can take without any prior experience. Some of our students have art in junior high, very little of them, unfortunately, don't have amazing elementary school teachers like you. No. Um, so I usually get this real mix of freshmen through seniors and a whole variety of abilities and confidence levels. Um, some of them are seniors who've been drawing forever, but they just kind of can fit in one visual arts class for graduating. And then others have chosen me because they don't want to take like a performing arts. They're like scared. So they're like, oh my gosh, I think I can draw. Um, so. <laughs> I'm always trying to find the perfect lesson that, like, you know, can make everyone feel successful, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I do teach one class. It's like a level two threes. So if they sign up again, um, I call it my advanced draw page. So. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm glad that no matter what their previous experience was, you can kind of, like, encourage that creativity and hopefully have the kind of, like, safe space that everybody wants from, um, from the, their art experience. So, yay! Oh, my gosh. So yay. exciting. Yeah. Okay. Melinda, okay. I'm super excited to get started, and I want you to just quick tell us, like, what do we need as far as materials today? We're going kind of, like, easy peasy, but, like, what do we need? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I do this as, like, a real intro to painting just so that everyone can feel, like, successful before we get into maybe more complicated themes and sketches and ideas. Um, I have been working so much in sketchbooks, so I'm going to draw in my sketchbook today, but you could um, draw on any scrap piece of paper. Um, we're going to be using um, some black paint to get started and a paintbrush. I'll probably use like a rounded one, uh, or but I have this flat one nearby just in case I want it. And then I'm not in my classroom, so I just have these like Target paints that my kids and I use. So it's just a little black acrylic. Um, and then I have an assortment of colors that I can use at the end. So that can be, I think watercolor would work great for this. Um, I'm going to start though with the black acrylic so I get a really nice um, uh, opaque dark line. So, awesome. But you can Perfect. use a sharpie. If you don't have paint, like grab a sharpie and, and join yeah. us. Yeah. So. yeah, we're all about problem solvers and we love when people participate at the same time. Like I said before, this is kind of that time to say, all right, I'm going to make something today and I know I have that creative spirit within me. So just like challenge yourself to come along on this adventure. Okay, so in a second here, we are going to just turn our cameras down. But before we do that, Melinda, I just wanted to do like a very quick plug for something happening very exciting on Thursday. Can you just give us like the tiniest little sneak peek because you will be presenting um, or have a presentation in our Art Ed um, Now conference on Thursday? Yeah, um, I will be actually on Wednesday kicking off uh, the conference with Tim live. So um, I know they um, have like a live event where they 
play some games and getting to know you and yep. to kind of um, prep for the next day of learning. And so I'm gonna have um, a little drawing activity. Um, the way I start my year is I always have my students personalize their sketchbook covers just so they take some ownership and, and feel like it's theirs. So um, I'm gonna do um, a little symbolic sketchbook drawing so anyone can come and maybe just doodle some ideas for a sketchbook design. Um, and I'll kind of share some of my student work with you if, I don't know, if you want to take that lesson and incorporate it into your classroom. Perfect. But I forgot to tell you, I have obviously water. Yeah. And I actually have two waters because I'm going to use that black first. Yeah. <laughs> and my water gets so, I want to have to run to the kitchen. So if you went and got one water, we'll go back and get two because it'll get all like muddy. <laughs> I love it. I, d I usually drink out of like mason jars. And so this okay. is always a dangerous game with my oh. paint thing. It's like the, the, the constant fear, but okay. I'm, I think I'm good. All of <gasps> okay. Yeah. So we would see you okay. Wednesday. Sorry, not Thursday, but Thursday is our big conference. And then Wednesday is that fun kickoff. So both of those events are amazing. You'll see me a little bit at that as well, helping out with Tim and Amanda, but Melinda's um, component is going to be awesome too. I'm so excited. This I know. And it's live too. So I'm like, this is my practice, you know, just yeah. scary. Oh my gosh. Buckle up. It's it's great. You're it's okay. Breathing. I know. I do see my like box breathing. Like, no. I, I'm yeah. excited. I just I'm I just you know you do it scared and and the nerves go away once you start exactly. drawing. So exactly. That's why it's our, our safe space is art making. Well, on that note, let's just click our cam um turn our cameras okay. down here and then you can tell us how you get started with this lesson with your students. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna do this ever so gracefully. Yep. Always. Ooh. Let's, you can see me. Okay, I'm in my I... dining room right now, but this is like the best little workspace. No, it's okay. perfect. Is it perfect? Yes. Oh it's just, there, I couldn't ask for anything better. Don't okay. change a thing. I'm going to move it up <laughs> just a little bit so I, it's not in my face. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're just going to start with, oh wait, can you see me now? Some black maybe, paint. Yep, maybe a little bit downturn so that it's like more on, not on your spiral. Yeah, there you go. And once it settles, that's it. Yeah, so you can hold your paper horizontal or landscape. Um, so when I'm doing this with my students, I wanted to mention that I do not have my document camera on because I really want to encourage everyone to not do what I'm doing. Does that make <laughs> right. sense? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was thinking that contemporary artist, his name is Solowit, and he, um, uh, had these wall paintings. Are you familiar with these at all? These wall drawings, he called them. Yes. Yes. So I love the idea that he would have his assistants do them. And each person drew the line differently. And each person understood the prompts differently. Yeah. And I kind of want to encourage my students. I mean, they're obviously not my little assistants. But the idea that, like, there isn't really one way of doing this. And it's okay if yours looks different than your neighbor's. Because that's what makes us, like, unique. Yeah. And that's yeah. there are. So I'm excited to like turn my camera on and see what yours looks like after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of that warm up a little bit. It's like, we're, we're just trying to be loose, just trying to follow a little bit of prompt, but like our own interpretation of it a little bit too. So can you remind us before we get started, we're going to start with black paint. Yes, um, not brown. Us... I put brown down as I was talking to you because I wasn't listening. Well, you think it's brown. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe I started getting my purple ready and I was Ooh. like, that's not black. That's purple. Do it. Fine. Go with the purple. I mean, no rules here. This is not right. Not assignment. It's so it'll work just fine. So I'm adding a little water to my paint just because I'm kind of twisting my brush a little bit just because I really want to coat it up and um, I don't know I like it to have like a little flow to it yeah. um, but if you wanted to embrace the texture of paint then you could use it nice and thick I mean all the, every brand is always a little bit different you know yeah for sure um, so okay you don't even know what we're doing so I'm gonna um, read a prompt aloud I did make a little visual because I know some of us are visual learners here right. and we're just gonna interpret this prompt we're gonna do kind of an intuitive line painting just a reminder that you can do it it doesn't have to look like mine you can interpret this however you want and then at the end we'll add some color and make a little finished work yeah. of art sound good hey, perfect okay. and you see my post-it note yes. so for anyone who's a visual learner um, we're gonna paint a horizontal line so super easy this is okay. kind of like a review of some of the elements in elementary school um paint a horizontal line okay here we go and you i can do your i love anywhere you want. Right, i'm like okay i feel like i'm gonna get it quote unquote wrong but like that's exactly what we were just talking about there's no wrong you're just no. gonna do what makes sense for you like does my line stop is it chunky does it go off the edge i don't know 
do what you got to do. Yeah. And I feel like this is like forced, or, or I'm forcing kids, but getting kids to start to make decisions. Like yeah. in this, we're going to have some prompts and I want you to feel confident to interpret it in your own way. Um, so at this point, sometimes they look around at their neighbors. They're like, am I doing it right? And I might come over and if, you know, if they drew it like this, just maybe turn, but, <laughs> right, right. um, but I'll just say, Hey, no, no worries. If you got it wrong, then, uh, the next one is we're going to paint a vertical line. Okay. So it could be anywhere on this page. Um, and it could be any thickness or any length. Um, I'm feeling very like Mondrian at the moment. Yes. So. I'm curious if anybody has any memory devices for like horizontal and vertical lines. Do you use anything in your in your classroom or in your brain, Melinda? No. Well, since I teach high schoolers, I think I'm secretly doing this to see if they remember that terminology. Right? So this is a great way of me like pre-assessing like who remembers what a vertical line is. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> like. I I'm the kind of person that always, oh, we are on the same side. I love that. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, friends. Okay. Hi. I love it. <laughs> Balance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't even see you. Every once in a while I peek at my phone, like, oh, you're doing it. I'm yes, yes, yes. I, I promise I'm right along with you, but we're, we are going to be a little bit surprised, which will be fun. But no, I, with the vertical and horizontal, I feel like I always kind of revert back to like, okay, horizontal has that like one across line to like, cross the H and so that's the horizontal like I don't know just little ways to remind myself oh. but that's the best but you're gonna have to teach me all that because <laughs> so my district is a, a junior high high school district um so I, I get a lot of ideas actually from some of the junior high teachers which I should have said in the beginning okay wait can I give us our next prompt please yep you're gonna paint a thick line Ooh, now okay. Any length, any direction just has to be a thick line. So I, I went ahead and switched to a thicker brush, but you could just double up if you only have one brush, right? Perfect. Um, oh man, hold on, I gotta think about where I'm gonna put this thick line. Maybe I'll put it here. I bet, bet you were doing the same thing right now. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nope. Um, oh, I giggled and I made it, well, it's fine. Imperfect lines are beautiful. It's true. Um, I. I I always tell my students it's like how we all have different handwriting styles like we can all write the same word but it just looks differently and and just trying to embrace that individuality um because i think at the beginning of the year they're all trying to do things correctly right or at yes yes in my brain um okay so i was gonna say though i learned this from a junior high teacher at my district her name is emmy leon and um she has an instagram i'll put it in the, in the little comments yeah. later it's yep. spelled out room 33 all spelled out and she shared this at a district pd and so i'm so grateful to her for giving me like a, a really great like entry level um painting project that i could do with my high school students yeah, so i, I changed it a, a little bit but um yeah i'm we've really have a spirit of sharing in our district lately and i i love it that's amazing Think all about the abundance mentality is sharing and encouraging each other and building that community so we can lean on each other during good times and bad times. <laughs> yes. And you know, COVID really kind of forced us, I think, to even become, you know, more collaborative. Yeah. Uh, and I will say, Emmy and I really, and a few other teachers, Angela Stetcher, I'll say, um, and a couple others, we really felt there was a need for that and started the PLC without even our district's prompting. So, nice. um, yeah. So I encourage anyone on there, if you feel like, maybe your district isn't collaborating or other teachers aren't getting together and it's a desire you have, you know, start a monthly PLC meeting. And even if only three people come, those are your people. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be everybody, just the people that, that are there to support you for sure. Yes. So I'm going to paint a thin line. I'm going to try to break out of my little rigid yeah. box. If I can hear. Ooh, this is hard to do a thin line with my nervous hand. I know, I, but I kind of love a wiggle, right? Yes, which, hey, spoiler alert, coming up soon. Uh, see, okay. you know what's funny is I was like already taking my thick and thin lines on this a little bit of a wiggly journey. So that's, that's, that's going to be what's going to be. See, that's you taking that and, and interpreting it in your own way. There's no, I did not say they had to be straight, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so number five, problem number five, we're going to paint a diagonal line. Yes, Ooh. I already made one, but I don't make another one. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Yes, you're like, yes, it's add, happening. I know, should I contrast or add some, I don't know. Maybe, I just say a diagonal for them. Some of them actually don't remember what that word means. I just say it goes from like high to low. Oh yeah. So how, how do you how do you get your students to remember diagonal? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, we always just take like, sometimes we'll do hand motions and we'll take a line and then just give it a little bit of a, get a give it a hill, yeah. right? Take an arm, take a hand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, honestly, I need to remember those things with high schoolers because. <laughs> I feel like even just this kind of stuff, like all of my students at the elementary level would love to do these kind of like prompt intuitive drawings and i feel like that's no different when students get older like it helps to have a little bit of direction not so much that you're like following exactly but a little bit where you're kind of like okay i don't have to think too hard about this i can kind of just go and see what happens yes and for any high school teachers out there if you're new i will say high schoolers love to play and i think we forget to incorporate play as they get older um, and I found anytime I kind of have a lesson that seems like, oh, they're going to think this is silly or kind of maybe too easy. Yeah. I, they love it. Um, and I don't know if that's just the contrast to the rest of their day. Um, okay. I'm on problem six. I'm sorry to talk and give instructions is hard. No, for this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Although I am really quick going to interrupt you before you say yeah. the next one. Um, someone was wondering, do you post like when you do this in your classroom, do you post the prompts one at a time? or do you kind of like give them all of them at once? How does that typically work within your room? I find they're overwhelmed when it's all at once and I post them one at a time on, I actually have a, you know, my projector on and I just yeah. hit the space bar and, Perfect. you know, a little animated slide and that way they could go back or if they feel I'm going too fast, at least they have, like I would have all these ones I've already done with you, yes. you know, Awesome. But I like the idea that they just start with one line and they've already begun. If yeah. I gave them all the instructions at once, I know my high schoolers, they'd be like, mm, I don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. It's like, it's too much. I see all the words. The words mean work and no thank you. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> thinking, which one do I want to start with? And I'm like, oh, can we just begin? Right? And then you kind of <laughs> tricked them into like, they've tried a bite of your meal. And they're like, actually, that's quite tasty. I'll join in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that analogy. Nice. Um, okay. Okay, let's paint a wavy line. It yes. could be as thick or thin or wherever you want. This now we're finally having some fun here with some waviness. I'm gonna do like a little twist of my paper. I feel like that ooh, needs to happen. Ooh, yes, I know. Mine's getting a little too boxed in. Like so I'm gonna do some irregularity here. Right. Take it on a journey. We're going somewhere. I don't know where, but we are going. <laughs> oh, I don't know either. You don't even know how many. I actually say I well, I'll tell you we have 12 prompts, okay. but you okay. could edit them out if it feels like too many. Um, and maybe I honestly might do this on bigger paper if it was in my classroom. Right. Okay. Oh, I'm already relaxed. That line really did it for me. Oh, yeah. The wavy is where it's at. I'm like, give me a wavy <laughs> line any day of the week. Yes. Oh, please. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going too fast for you, but the this is next perfect. It's a long line. It's a long line. A long oh. line. So. I don't know. Maybe I'll add to one of mine. That could be kind of part, or maybe I'll do a little border. Oh, I shouldn't tell you what I'm doing. No, no, it's, it's good. Well, cause I can barely see yours, but long to me is intriguing. Cause it's like, what does yeah. that even mean? I don't know. Right? You know what? So another twist on this that my friend Emmy shared with me is she will switch up the lines to be um, like emotional lines. Yeah. Like paint an angry line, paint a happy line and that could be a great like i don't know a little warm up between before like a bigger project like in high school some of our projects are so long and serious yes, yes it loosens it gives you a little bit of like just relax yeah it's okay yeah. you know and like even you and i are going i don't know if this is a, a a pace you would do in your classroom but i feel like this is like the perfect way to just kind of like get started yep. I usually do like a sketchbook prompts with my students at the beginning and I would love to incorporate a few painting ones. They would absolutely love that. I know. And just, just using the black line, like this isn't, I keep like little ramekins out for them. It's not that much prep for this day. I do this all in one class period. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next day you could have out markers or color pencils or more paint and they could fill in between the lines. They could practice blending from light to dark. If that was maybe a skill um, that you were incorporating. Okay. Um, we're gonna. This one's quick. Okay. We're gonna paint a short line. Short, short line. Oh, I know. <laughs> Where I'm gonna send a float mine over here. Just like a little sprinkle, a little confetti. Cause I'll be honest. I, when I was in an art class, I mean, I think I'm a pretty creative person, but I really liked um, if it was like a warm up activity, one that was a little bit. I don't want to say the word mindless, but 
that had some instructions and then from there i could become creative but the blank oh, totally page, when they were like draw all your feelings i'm like uh, uh, i don't You're know like, what <laughs> Yeah, so, I so, feel stressed. Yeah. <laughs> that is what I feel. <laughs> and now I, because uh, I overthink things, right. and you know, especially yeah. if you're part of your identity is like I'm an artist, then it's even more pressure. Yeah. You know? Oh, completely. I mean, I think that's part of it too. Is like even I'm I'm learning through um, that post it or the um, oh. sticky note yeah. challenge that we're doing. Is it's like not everything's gonna be perfect, but you're just making something every day, and it's really encouraging that like it's okay just yeah. make something that's fine yeah. <laughs> thank you for modeling that and saying that because yeah. <laughs> i i need to hear it over and over again oh yeah and i think it's good too when we're doing stuff like this to remind our students of it as yeah. well yeah. okay i see i took a peek it says curved i'm so excited yeah, yeah a curved line okay so anything that's not straight will do curved. um maybe i'll echo a, a curve curved line oh boy i know so um, and this is really helping my students, like, even just learn how to hold a brush again. I, uh, some of my students haven't painted maybe since they were younger. Maybe they've done a lot of drawing or a lot of digital art and holding a real paintbrush. Sometimes they're like, Ugh. yeah. And so just getting them the feel of that, like how much water, how little water. Yeah. And, you know, no pressure painting. Okay. I did my curved line. Yes. Kind of. I might, it's like more of an S. <laughs> Oh my gosh, three more. We might run out of room, but I think it'll no, look this is, cool. No, this is good. I think it'll encourage us to like think a little bit of our, about our space. Yeah, look, look at, we're already naturally composing. Like oh, at yeah. first we weren't, and now yeah. we're like negative space. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, we're gonna paint a zigzag line. Did you zigzag. Get oh, the classic zigzag. Yeah, 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 zigzag line. Okay. So we've got good. like a couple seconds where you sort of look and you're like, where do I need that to go? I know. I feel a yeah. little bit stuck. So I don't know. Be bold and make a decision here. Be, Be bold. Easy. Don't overthink it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, right. As I'm like <laughs> overthinking it. I'm like, like, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Panic so attacks. <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny. Okay. Okay. No, I'm not going to overthink it. I just yep. don't really like the way these lines. I mean, I didn't say this at the beginning, but your lines can overlap and intersect, which my student students sometimes don't think that's okay to do. So yeah, if, yeah, if, go for it. if you didn't already know, overlap. Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Ooh, it's like a little basquiat over here. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. So we got two more. Okay. Are you are you good with yours? I'm so, so ready. I'm so ready. I'm gonna paint a broken line. Broken. Now broken. Broken. That just means it visually communicates a line, but maybe isn't solid. So it can be broken up regularly or irregularly. Ooh. And for anyone who still doesn't get it, I just say, you know, down the center of the road, how there's a broken line. Right, right, right. right. Oh, a little yeah. dash, little dot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. broken line, okay. Ooh. So this is gonna add some variety to mine because it's starting to need a focal point here. Yeah, I feel like all of my stuff started so bold and now it's like taking a little quiet, calm oh, <laughs> subtle I journey at, i don't know I don't, I don't know where it's going but i like it we don't know okay i mean that really led your eye to the other side of my page we'll see yeah. okay you tell me when you're ready for the last okay. one okay i'm ready for the last one okay so our last prompt is we're gonna paint a varied line yeah. so i describe that as a line that has an irregularity so Maybe it could be like our, our line that started straight, but then it mm. became curved. Mm. Maybe it started thin and you pressed down harder and it became thick, thick and thin, thick and thin, varied in some way. So definitely this would not be a varied line. So something that has um, varied. varied. Okay. And this is our last one. So this is kind of like your, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna see if I can practice making something that's thick and then has a thinness to it. Just because mm -hmm. I like that feel for my students. Okay. I'm doing like two weird lines sort of next to each other that are like becoming oh, a line. Okay. I, don't, I'm not, I don't know. I, As my voice just gets aggressively high, I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> just go with it. They're, they identify as one line. It's fine, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yeah. I'm already coming back and like reworking mine because I'm like, what is <laughs> 
Um, okay. Well, I don't know. If we we have time to add some color to this, right? Oh, yes, we do. Okay, so I'm gonna like peek my little head down and just look at yours again. OMG, I love how different they are. Oh, yours are so much more expressive with your like <laughs> well, not really expressive. Because your long line is. Yeah, I just made a border with mine. No, I, I love it. I love a good scribble. I just, I mean, they're different, expressive, you know? Yeah, yeah. The way, yeah. The way that they are, yes. Oh, oh, I love that. Well, okay, so if you were an art teacher from here, you could, like, reinforce some concepts, like if you were teaching about analogous colors or, like, warm and cool colors, right? You could right. have students make some choices. Um but you know, we can do whatever we want here because it's summer. So I'm, I'm just gonna put down some colors I like and I'm, I'm putting down some white because I wanna make sure my lines stay, I don't know, bold. Yeah. And I feel like if I use really dark colors, they might disappear. For sure. And you could do whatever you want at this point. Like I love the idea that my lines intersect and I have fun trapped areas. So I could just drop color into each of those trapped lines um, I could practice like doing tiny little blends from light to dark. Um, or you could just paint shapes like um, Emmy told me with her students like she has them uh, pick primary colors and paint like three circles or four mm. triangles. And you know, whatever she, kind of concept she wants to reinforce. Okay, so this is why I have a second water. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Do not drink that Melinda. No. <laughs> This one could be drinking, or it can be used for part two. <laughs> I mean, I I love this. The instant, like, abstraction and, like, confident feeling of, like, okay, we've got something on the page. We can just go from here. And it didn't take us very long at all. What an amazing <laughs> warm-up and, like, a way to just give students a feel like, yeah, I did something <laughs> today. Yeah. And, I, again, some of my students, those fine motor skills, even high school, are, like, on point and you could get right into some detail yeah. work and there's really need some more practice just like handling the brush and mixing some colors and so um i actually call this our practice painting and i usually get like full participation because they just started and they're like i guess i'll finish <laughs> <laughs> and you said they do it in one class right yeah the yeah. black part and the next day um you, this could be something they even work on maybe as a warm up, like, you know, fill in all of the white space with, you know, practicing mixing secondary colors or whatever you want it to. My yeah, are, I could oh. speak. yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just thinking about how it's nice to have projects where there's like kind of continuous work too. And granted, it is paint. So sometimes that's harder to have those materials out. But I feel like there's so much detail you could go in and add. This could be like, okay, go back to that abstraction. Like, kind of keep going and like really fill it in in a way that's just so intensely decorated yeah. once you get those lines down. Yeah. yeah, like you could then from here, like go into like a color wheel lesson yeah. and then of course huh. you have like extra paint that day. So you're like, oh, why don't we with the last 15 minutes, um, you know, add some of these colors that we made to our abstract painting. Yeah. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing right now, but I've I just mean, the same. <laughs> I'm just like, just don't don't think Sarah just do and that's exactly what I'm doing yeah and again if, if a student doesn't know what to do I'm like just fill the little trapped areas yeah. and it always kind of comes out looking cool and it's then like, yeah it's like the game what do you see you know when we do a little scribble scribble what you, what caught your eye I know oh and some of my students are so creative this one girl last year had like a rainbow order where she filled each shape but as it went across the page it was like red orange yellow green blue purple and i was like i'm not mad at that that is so gorgeous <laughs> i think i told them like pick an analogous color scheme but you know they're always like i'm gonna do whatever i want in this yeah, moment, yeah. so yeah exactly that, you're like maybe I'll, I'll offer some suggestions knowing that of course you will take it in the direction that makes sense for you yeah yeah so i, I think teachers are gonna be like well do you mark down for that i think what i would do is if they changed up their color scheme just have them write to me when they turn it in like um, you know, which color scheme did you use? So as long as they know, like, oh, I did a rainbow color scheme, then, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, I feel like that's, that's part of it, too, is I always, like, I also am the same. I'm rarely going to say, like, no to an idea that a student has. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, of course, it depends on what kind of teacher you are or what you might be learning about. But I always just say, talk to me as an artist, and then you're good. Like, so tell me kind of intentionally what you're thinking, and then that's fine. <laughs> yes.
Yeah. Yes, it can explain it. I know, but it, it takes a while for them, my high school students, to get out of that, like, you know, what's correct. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> I have a prompt, but I, I, you know, don't be so concerned about doing it exactly like how you, I, you want me to, I don't know, like, they just always see me as, like, the client right. of some sort. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. But, like, are you happy? Is this good? Does this make you happy? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I, does it make you happy? I don't know. Right. Um, so... I always try to put it back on them and sometimes even have them grade their own work. Really love uh, that. Yeah. So something that has a, you know, a simple rubric, I'll have them assess themselves. And then it, it tries to almost to remove me as that, the client or some patron, yeah. you know? although I'm their big right. fan for sure. I'm like, always like, Oh my God, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and they always think I'm lying. They're like, Miss Simone, why you lie to me? I'm like, what? No. no, because I genuinely love and care about you and what you do and what you create. <laughs> And they, again, like Rainbow Girl came up with something I didn't think of. And then I was like, man, I'm going to show that to my class. <laughs> they love that. I, I think that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to finish in one little spot. And then I th- think we should just show each other where we're at, even though we could totally yeah. keep going. Well, but it is all now. I know. I want to add like a bright orangey red to mine. Okay, yeah. you just tell me when you're done and I'll flip okay. over. I think I'm going to put, I'm going to, you know what? It's funny because as I started, I'm like, ooh, I like certain parts only where I kind of want to like chop out a piece of it you know Ooh. so it's like even cutting it apart and doing something with it would be Ooh. really fun like a little viewfinder and be like where yeah. do I want to... oh my yeah. god exactly I love that okay oh you're so green Melinda I know I stuck with a, a cool color but you know I'm gonna add red once we sign off so okay uh, okay mine's gonna get real drippy but I will show you what it looks like there also is like a random piece of glitter on it I don't know I just don't I don't know you're the art room glitter right oh my it just follows me yay balance your colors it feels like mondrian but like it is a little i did go kind of primary today but i think if i were like continuing i would just do so many more colors i would just keep going okay okay show us show us i'm like in a turquoise i'm in a turquoise yes oh i also love that real that like thick and thin line that's a really great like beautiful practice with a brush like think of, yeah thinking about the things that your students might have a hard time deciphering or just like here's a challenge like see what you can do yeah. so yeah. good and again a great like cell adaption would be like let's do emotional lines right like, how are we feeling today yes i love it yeah oh my gosh i can't is i already been like 30 yeah. minutes i know this zooms by it's so quick yeah. Melinda, that was so fun, and I'm so excited to see you this week for the Art Dead Now conference. Yeah, can you tell us, um, remind us again where people can follow along for um, your adventures so we can see what you're up to in your room. Oh, yeah, so I share uh, lessons and artwork, my student work, um, on Instagram. It's called Art of Te- Wait, Art of Teaching? <laughs> yeah, art- that's how I actually I made it so long ago. That's how I found Art of Ed. I was right. like, this- candle and I was like dang it it already exists and I'm like and it's a really cool like the whole I know I love so it. it's called art of teaching I started so long ago I didn't use my name because I was wasn't quite sure what I could share at my school so I kind of kept myself a little anonymous but um I don't know if my my students are starting to find me on there um so um anyways it's called art of teaching and then I also shout out to Emmy for sharing this idea with me um hers is room 33 all spelled out amazing junior high teacher in our district so um perfect yeah thanks so much yeah Yeah. oh my gosh i will share after the fact too um emmy's handle and yours again and a couple other things too um and then i hope to see so many of you later this week at our now conference and i'm kind of celebrating our love of creating art together and melinda thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us this was so fun i loved how loose and amazing and just like intuitive it was perfect Oh, you're a delight. Thank you for inviting me. So, of course. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you later.